This week's videos are sponsored by ExpressVPN. More on them after the reaction, people. Citizens of the Reject Nation, it is time for Monarch episode thrust today. John, are you excited? God, yes. Oh, man. I'm ill with uh, excitement that's insatiable. We gotta watch the episode, guy. Leave a like on this video. <laughs> Smart. Oh. Kong. The, uh, something. I don't know. Muto, the subscribe button. <laughs> Can't think of anything clever. <laughs> thank you to Pepper for helping us edit down these highlights. Also, thank you to everyone who's been joining us on our Patreon page for this show. Full length reaction watch launch where you sync it with your own copy of Monarch. The first super sex rejects. We'll cover several things over there exclusively with highlights and watch longs included. Alrighty, guys, let's get to it. What's it gonna be? Wait a minute. We don't have a minute. You don't want to find out if your own father's alive or dead. That's your business, but I do want to find out. <laughs> We start where his trail ended. They searched for his plane for weeks. That's hundreds of square miles of, you know, Alaska. Snow and ice. Now this is a Milwaukee, which means an entirely different pruning process. And this is a Japanese man. <laughs> <laughs> we just call him a man here. <laughs> They're on to us. Get to the van. <laughs> I'll drive you the keys. What a interesting smash to subs there. Press the button. Button? Yes! Hoo-ah! <laughs> Hoo-ah! Let's go, Jack Burton. Drive that truck. Watch out, watch out, watch out! <laughs> Boy. Oh, that was a great shot. Truly. Throwing down for some car stunts in this show. <laughs> and he was in love with her. Yeah. That's a nice callback to episode two. Oh You're destroying <laughs> all of Japan. Yes. <laughs> Just drive it right through all of Tokyo. <laughs> <laughs> Bigger menace than the monsters themselves. I'm a better actor than my son. Wow, Wowie. what a transition shot. They nice. do look a lot alike. Nice saving Private Shaw. They've got to figure out a way where they can interact with each other. If you two want to keep this our private little monster hunting club, then fine. We pull the request. If you want to make a difference, you want to do some, some serious science, then we need backing. Damn, these Russells are good actors. What kind of difference are you going to make? Welcome to Monarch General. Oh, shit. Chris Heyerdahl. Who'd have thought you'd partly escort duty into your first command? These eggheads are already starting to grow on you, Sean. It's a bit like herding cats. Sir, if cats had Geiger counters and thought they were smarter than you. Egghead wants his bookie wook. Dr. Muir, William Randa. Congratulations on your promotion, General. Well, thank you, miss. Of course. And it's doctor. Some respect on my degrees. I believe you have something to show us, doctor. Oh, my God. He just called her doctor without incident. Oh, he a tumor is slowly growing <laughs> He's in him. clearly got an ulterior motive and is a villain. <laughs> Tell me this is some kind of fossil. That would be a reasonable guess, but we took this impression in a muddy field in Indonesia. Holy shit. This is gonna give me nightmares. This and this woman doctor yeah. thing. <laughs> a lot of firsts today. We had a way to lure it out of hiding. All we need is 150 pounds of uranium. And let me explain that, sir. It's as much as we dropped on Japan. Hey. A creature like this. As big as this is an existential threat to global security. And only Americans can stop it. That's what we do. Can you imagine if this came out before any of the Godzilla movies? I'd be pretty uh, excited. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Say, what did it? What is this building do? Yeah. Yeah. Aside from the inevitable. <laughs> if it wasn't for you, neither of us would be here. That is not a theory. That's a fact. So you are saying that there is a place for gun-toting Neanderthals? <laughs> <laughs> If we hide who we are and what we're trying to do, then what's the point of doing it at all? They're not trying to hide. It's about easing in. Yeah, you got to prepare people for like, that Like, I'm a woman and... And I went to a lot of school. Well, I know I, medical thing. Yeah, and just general knowledge of science and the humanity. Nurse? No, no, no. Uh, 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 not uh, that no. kind of doctor. Not that kind of doctor. No, the nurse not a doctor. Yeah. I am simply an expert in a field of expertise. Mm, Billy kept these journals. He'd scribble down every crazy thing he came across until his pencils were nothing but nubs. I'd be so curious to know how Wyatt and Kurt worked this role together. 
Something in here Hiroshi didn't want Monarch to know about, and my gut says, if we find it before they do, we find him. But May built something to read them, but it's back at her place. I actually, I, I digitized them already. What? Well, all right, Egghead. Need you to look in there for anything about Alaska. Why does he look so upset? He just feels betrayed. When was Monarch founded? Well, uh, late 40s, thereabouts. Wouldn't that make you, like, 90 years old? What can I say? Good genes, huh? No, he's hiding something. Genes spent out outside of normal space time. Did our dad really work for them? It is your family business. You gotta warn people, try to stop it. Hey, that's exactly what we were trying to do. But you were there, you saw it. You really think anything on Earth could have stopped it? <laughs> then he threw his life away for nothing. Oh, they could have been mentally prepared. Oh, they're on a boat. That makes sense. I was like, why Why would there be such a gridlock right now? Bikini bottom. What the hell? Oh. Oh, no. Whoa. I told you we couldn't trust that. Hey, hold on. Let me handle this. <laughs> let me just let me handle this. What brief did he give them? I mean, they're treating it like it's an enemy. Must destroy. This appears to be going in a direction we didn't discuss. We discussed you needing a large quantity of uranium. Not in bomb form, sir. Should have been more specific. You could have told us. Well, that's not how top secret nuclear tests work, son. God damn it. Asking for is a chance to assess what we're dealing with. We don't even know what these things are. They're an existential threat to global security. <laughs> you did say all the wrong things. This is not what they had in mind, but it's become bigger than all of us. You asked for the support of the United States Army. This is it. Get used to it. We know the weapons are kind of useless, but can you really blame the arm? Like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, you told this giant creatures here, you I need to illuminate it. Just lead with your gun. You don't need to stick your neck out for us any longer. This is my fault. You cost me my business and my home, my life, everything I've built, who I am. Damn. But until we sort out your mess and I get back what you cost me, you do not get to tell me what I need. You're the real monster, man. The melodrama's the uh. monster. <laughs> we get one eager beaver border guard who finds these on us, and it's game over immediately. So we need to get rid of these. Just dump them over. Why do I have to do everything you say? And why are we going to Korea? My father disappeared in Alaska. I was out of Japan, didn't I? Under this ship. No passport. A monarch in sight. That we know of. You did a lot off camera. <laughs> yes, you did. You two want to start calling the shots. You got every right. So once we get there... Where to? Alaska, like I said. Yeah, man, you don't know what you're doing. I want to call the shots. I just wanted to break you out. Yeah. <laughs> but I didn't want your actual guide. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> okay, where's your friend? Just trust me, okay? I hope it's a K-pop cameo. I think we're supposed to be in line number two. Shit. Did you want to sweet talk the lady at the window? I got my sister's uh, adopted grandkids with me, right? So we're, we're on that ship. And I told them, uh, for safekeeping, we got to put everything in one backpack. Backpack, right? So anyway, look. <laughs> Jeez. i never been to North Korea. <laughs> Swift. <laughs> no, he was speaking in code. Yeah, somebody else heard. Well, then you're even dumber than you look. Oh. 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 <laughs> Hey. Uh, my brother. Oh, you're home. You're home. You look younger every time. You look good. You look younger. Oh ye, a little faith. Come on. <laughs> Welcome to Japan, ma'am. I was supposed to be moving my daughter into her college dorm room this weekend. But now my ex-husband is celebrating this milestone with her because Lee Shaw has decided to no longer avail himself of his generous retirement package. I know so much about her. She's poised, successful businesswoman, has a troubling marriage, and she invests in her because of She's no bullshit. She gets shit done. That plane is being refueled and we'll be ready to leave in 30 minutes. You'll both be on it. Bill Rand is fine. Six year old field notes and crackpot theories are not going to help us avert another G day. Yeah, well, Lee Shaw seems to think otherwise. Oh. If you really believe they were so important, why not bring it to Dr. Sarazawa? <laughs> Finally. Shoy's in South Korea. Facial recognition AI flagged him and the others. <laughs> He's so excited. 
You on that plane in 30. You, get a tactical team and get on Shaw's ass. Whatever you need. I need my partner. Yeah. Loyalty. She's really protecting him. Loyalty. Ready for you, need you. We're going all the way to Alaska in that. Don't think of it as old. Think of it as vintage. Think of it as a sturdy piece of engineering from an older time when shit was made to last. Hopefully, maybe, who knows. They already figured out a way how to lure seeing the creature. All right. It's a theory. It's a strong theory. Clearly, they like the radiation. Ooh. What do we got? Attention, attention, sonar contact. Attention, monster. <laughs> we are the U.S. government. <laughs> if you're out there, flap your wings one time. <laughs> Nicely done. Oh, is yeah. Is that Gojira? It's like the actual Godzilla movie. No tests. They are trying to kill it. Him. We call him Gojira. What the hell does that thing need protection from? <laughs> Us. And the shit we oh do Oh my to god, it is. Not bad. Wow. How have we never seen this thing before? If they go through with this, how will we ever know? This is wrong. Stop the military, Shaw. If we can't learn everything we can about the enemy. You wait to see what the enemy is going to do. You've already lost. My wow. man. Wow. Nice. Oh Whoa. my God. That water sail. Look at the mist on him. Damn, Ooh. that's a great shot. Let's go. <laughs> that's a great that's shot. That's legitimate. The hell did he need to prove in Kong Skull Island? Yeah, seriously. <laughs> well, he's gonna wipe out this whole unit, probably. I don't know. Oh boy! Oh boy! Oh boy! Oh boy! Oh, dude, ain't gonna do shit. Don't worry. Guys. Wow, what a solid throwback to the original. <laughs> Godzilla's just going to be standing there with his arms folded. Really? What the shit? <laughs> <laughs> That's Billy's handwriting there. Yeah, these are geo coordinates from all over the world. Everything on the list is checked off except for this one. And when I put it into the map, it's in Alaska. If we knew where your father's airplane was heading when it disappeared, I, I could pinpoint this. It was flight 74-something. Filed a flight plan from Nome to Barrow. Numbers, data. Time to cowboy up, duo. We got a new destination. I got it. Outback Steakhouse. He was headed to Barrow. That's not where he was going. He was going for cigarettes and never came back. Their first weapon was strong enough to make Godzilla go away for a little bit? I yeah, I don't know. Well, this Godzilla was just like, ah, I'm not dealing with this, and just swam away. <laughs> General called me in to discuss our funding. So I gave him a proposal, a string of monarch outposts, extra staff, monitoring equipment, the works. He rejected it. Gave us more. Gave us a bigger budget, yeah. He said we didn't ask for enough. They are giving us a blank check to find out if there are more of those out there. That's a simple question. What if the next one doesn't pop up in the middle of the Pacific? What if it's near New York or Washington? Saying that you want to go public with the details of a classified H-bomb explosion? Yes. Why not? Because they electrocuted the Rosenbergs. This is good world building. This is really good world building. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Does the general need to know everything? I'm sorry, are you suggesting that I lie to my superior officer? No, but a lie and a secret are two different things. Oh. What's where Whoa! he got it from? <laughs> this is why I have affairs. Because a lie and a secret are two, two different, different things. things. Thank you, Lee Shaw. <laughs> <laughs> Use that one. <laughs> that you will tell me everything that I need to know. Are you okay with that? Are you? I'm yeah. fine with it. <laughs> My opinion matters. Man, Monarch was supposed to be something beautiful. Right, promising new frontier. away from Shaw. Where are we? U.S. of A. We come to Papa soon. Damn. I don't know what I'm more afraid of, that we don't find Dad or we do. Feels like a punch in the gut either way, and I don't know how many more I can take. 
Let me tell you a secret. Not a lie. <laughs> you don't appreciate life so much until you're afraid to lose it. Not so much when you see other people lose theirs. I saw many people die. You get out of the bay each morning, you roll the dice. Terrible things may happen. True. And never have a chance to tell your papa to go screw himself. <laughs> Dude. I like that guy. I do wish I cared more about the main two leads. Because <laughs> everything else is really engrossing. Yeah. Interesting. Buckle in. Go, oh, Amy, why is he flying? Lee Shaw is the fast pilot I know when he's flying by seat of the pit. <laughs> Put it right up here where I can see it. Yeah. Oh. Balance. <laughs> Clever. Old school leveler. Shit my pants. No time to think about it. Oh. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> hell of a job, co pilot. <laughs> you guys make a hell of a team. I mean, that's his daughter. It's true. I don't know whose daughter is who. Kurt Russell is the daughter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Kurt Russell's got to be blood related to one of them. Yeah. Seven four seven what? He's got a sighting landing. Damn. No. Did not have Kurt Russell behind the wheel. Oh, that's it's not, not him. him. It's not him. Yes. See, belts unbuckled. Maybe he got thrown free. I'll be a monkey's naked uncle. Has he got camp? Do you think anyone's there? Oh my god, he's gonna see his two kids and be like, oh shit. shit. I never meant for you two to meet each other. This was the place that strategically you should be least likely to find me in ever. I faked my death because I didn't want to deal with this <laughs> two, awkward two encounter. Finding out about each other. <laughs> it's like he wanted to land right here. If everyone died in the crash, who set all this gear up? Poltergeist researchers. I know that handwriting. It's Japanese. Me too. Whose handwriting is it? Whoa! It's their mom's. He survived. Oh, oh, that's a nice moment. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I've been waiting to hug my hot sister this whole time. Just <laughs> wait for the right excuse. <laughs> Oh, hatch. It's going to explode. <laughs> Kill him off. <laughs> it's a giant grenade. <laughs> Just made it look like. Or something else came after they landed oh, and ripped it apart. Some kind of Muto. Snowju. We're going now! Ah, nice. That's <laughs> terrifying. Oh, is it a Yeti? I'll touch the plate. You come quick. Move. Wait, how does he know it's gonna like awaken right now? Oh, oh shit! Oh, wow, look at that thing! Damn! Ooh. Come on, my dude. It seems like being in the plane is the worst thing to be in. Yeah, whoa. whoa. Nice. Like an ice vacuum or so is it yeah. spirit? Like okay. Oh. No. Should have got it in the plane. What a face. <laughs> it's all right. Old man Shaw's been able to figure his way out of every situation. Uh huh. I'm sure he'll figure it out. Oh yeah, very start of the next episode, he'll have like a special whistle or something that like makes Kai yeah. <laughs> incapacitated for a minute. <laughs> we'll jump back into action. All right, all right. Mm. Damn, you know, with the dad in hiding. Yes. 
especially when he doesn't want to be like caught by a monarch. Yeah. One of the best things he can probably do is find ways of securing his location and hiding. Keeping it secret, but not lying about it. Yeah. <laughs> totally. Totally. But what would the best way to be? To, to What would the best way be to? I'll show you right now. Secu- oh. I'll show you. Yeah, I'll please. show you. I'll show you naturally. Okay. Naturally, gonna show you. Yeah, walk me through this. Yeah, I'll naturally me. show you. Explain all it to me, yeah, and I'll repeat you. all the you stuff the, you're explaining. You be the camera, and I'll be. Sure. <laughs> Just look at this through my eyes. Naturally, show you. Big thanks to ExpressVPN for sponsoring this video, a real game changer I've been using for years. That's right, years. So whenever they want to work with us, it's an instant yes. You've likely heard about ExpressVPN for online privacy and security, but there's more to it than that. However, there was a very real incident recently with Spectrum shutting down my internet and contacting me due to a suspecting hacking attempt. And funny enough, I realized I hadn't actually activated my ExpressVPN on my new laptop that I got a couple of months ago, so I was paying the consequences. Having faced a serious hacking issue on YouTube a couple years ago, That made ExpressVPN my go-to for both security and freedom. I mean it. And yes, what you've heard is true. Believe me, this channel knows. You can use ExpressVPN to watch movies and shows on Netflix that are not available in your country. This means accessing a vast array of content of over 100 countries, like a global cinema at your fingertips. It's super easy. Open ExpressVPN, switch locations, refresh the browser, and there you have it. Whether it's K-dramas on South Korean Netflix, Hulu, BBC, iPlayer, YouTube, or more, ExpressVPN has you covered. And it's incredibly fast, ensuring no buffering or lag for smooth, HD streaming. It's versatile too, working on not just computers, but phones, media consoles, smart TVs, and more. This means you can enjoy your favorite shows on anywhere, any screen, protect and elevate your internet experience. So if you want to get access to hundreds of new shows, use my link, expressvpn.com slash rejects. And you can get an extra three months of ExpressVPN for free. That's expressvpn.com slash rejects. So head to expressvpn.com slash rejects to learn more. Thank you again. <laughs> wow, that was informative. It was very that informative. Was very informative. I have a little bit of a headache, but it's good. John, did you love it? I I liked this episode quite a bit. I did. You didn't say you loved it. I I really really liked it. Wow, did you you're, love not, it? you're not quite at the love. I'm st- I'm still inching towards love, but I really like it. I like that's my favorite one. Is yeah, out, of, out probably... of the three we've seen so far, that's my favorite one. Sure, it's the most sort of like propulsive, and it's got a really. Kind of, you know, the, I don't know, you're moving and you've got, you know, a couple really good kaiju touchstones on both timelines. I feel like we're actually unpacking new shit. Okay. Whereas before, even if it is just sort of fleshing out the, and Monarch, un- understanding how Monarch came to be with its uh, corruption is a really cool angle to me of like, oh, this actually really did start off as a... Uh, wondrous prospect. Something truly just interested in learning about these. Uh, yeah, they're all Oppenheimer. They they're are. All, they're all they're oh, like, oh. <laughs> the, what horrible, horrible door then, have we oh, opened? Oh shit, now we have a nuclear bomb. Innovation, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, uh, this is not what we meant by this. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, the, I, I, I really like how it seems to riff on elements of, of, of history in the way how to my understanding, the original Godzilla was a metaphor for a threat of nuclear war. Am I correct about that? Yeah. The trauma, All I think about are big monsters punching each other. The traumas. Not the deep shit. And the fallouts of nuclear yeah, yeah. war. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Real <laughs> life Historical terror. atrocities. Put a guy in a costume murders. and blow up fake buildings. <laughs> smash the buildings with your funny yeah, little screams. Yeah. Rubber suits. Rubber suits. Rubber yeah, suits. yeah, my bad. What did I say? Oh, I don't know. Some bullshit about you history got, and you trauma. Got, and, yeah, you, know. you got very, you really corrected me on something. <laughs> you were like, rub, rub, Greg, 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 rubber suits, Greg, rubber suits, Greg. rubber suits, Greg. Yeah, guys, guys in suits. That's what the first movie is a real metaphor about. <laughs> guys. <laughs> Take off the suits, but, you'll be less angry. Um, but no, I mean, like the the way they were showing, really showcasing how the three of them, you know, young John Goodman, <laughs> um, <laughs> young, young Kurt, Kurt Russell, Russell. <laughs> and 
and, and the and grandma of doctor and doctor grandma who, doc, who doctor just gets woman to doctor. be the definitive version of her character yeah. because we haven't seen her in the future. <laughs> doctor doc, doc, doc woman, uh, <laughs> doctor <laughs> woman, <laughs> what say you? What are your feminine instincts telling you this time? Every scene is it's a doctor, a woman doctor. <laughs> Whoa, what? I hope they bring it every episode. Yeah, guys, it's pet. We're 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 past World War Two now. Women have had jobs. It's okay. So the. <laughs> That, but that I, I, like everything on the beach and everything that was like hearkening back to like while while you do get a little bit of like nostalgia homage um um emotionality just that entire sequence yeah i mean it's like it's always cool to see godzilla don't remember that's really cool and i love the visual too with seeing through the um, yeah through the old camera through the old camera i'm like wow that feels so vintage to use their words yeah. uh but it was a great aesthetic touch and the this show does deal a lot with duplicitousness and dichotomy, sure. and then seeing that within Monarch itself, of uh, like they did really didn't want to attack Godzilla, they really wanted to understand, it. and then you're and then seeing I like I like when they're cutting back and forth between. I'm I'm I find myself now super interested and compelled by the cutting back and forth, mm -hmm. seeing how Shaw was the one who went to the army and approached them like. He was just on some escort mission with this doctor, and now he's like open up the door for this secret camp of of, of government, mm. and you know they were like, yeah, you'll get unlimited funding. We're gonna really help you out. And then you cut to the future, and he's just like, we got to keep him in prison. We're taking control of the entire thing. You know, like it's yeah. that it feels like it was really riffing on something that feels real world. Yeah, and and the, and the whole time I've been kind of watching the show going like what the hell are they expanding upon or showing me that is really all that different yeah. than what we already know and they've really and i feel like this episode truly hit the mark and maybe it hit, hit it for people earlier already for me this really hit the mark on monarch being something i really want to unpack yeah you know that's, and that's probably my favorite aspect and prior to this i didn't really get that sense i'm like i always feel like monarch was always being treated like they're kind of corrupt and then you need them and <laughs> yeah, and, because who else is going to deal with this? Yeah, <laughs> who yeah. else is equipped? Yeah, and, and this one really um, gave us a different angle, and there's mystery with like the first time they actually discover Gojira, which goes back to when uh, Sirizawa does talk about that in the in the 2014 Godzilla movie. Man. You know, so they we got that filled in, which is really cool to really get that entire thing fleshed out. Yeah. Um, and. Should have said in the middle of the reactions. People were like, uh, yeah, fucking, but I'm like, well, no, I know. I just waited. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. It's okay. We you gotta be. You gotta say everything, but don't talk. Don't talk too much. Don't talk uh, too much. Yeah. But get all the right <laughs> things to say <laughs> in the reaction. <laughs> so there's nothing. You know, we should just start pausing, wrecking the watch along experience, and then just like you, making sure we get each reference down before we move on with the show. So yeah, bringing that in, and. And then, yeah, un uncovering other mutos as well. Yeah. Um, my main issue is I really just don't give a shit about the two kids. Like they're, they're, <laughs> the way they're portrayed is the most baseline flat it's to me. It is is so trite. <laughs> is so baseline. And, yeah. And like I have, I really like the moment where they did hug. Yeah. That was they, nice. They both finally have a reason to connect over something. You get a sense, a little bit more sense of depth of not willing to be vulnerable because it's easier to kind of take out this anger and pain on each other than it is to deal with the fact that their dad is dead and did something horrible. So I get the subtext. I do. It's there. It's very, it's very but, obvious. But but the way it's done, the way they go about it is, and it's and it, and, the, and it's hampering of exposition. It just kind of feels repetitive, a little monotonous. Uh, I'm just not the biggest fan of it, and the performances are fine. They're fine performances. They are. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to sit here and be like they're bad performances. It, 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 they're not really doing something to – they're not strong enough, though, to elevate it beyond its flatly written material. Yeah. yeah. If, <laughs> if I was an actor, I would be hungry for more material to sink my teeth into as those characters in particular. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because we see a lot of this – these are archetypical beats, and so – Especially when you're in a position where, yeah, the script doesn't seem, seems least concerned about spending time writing that story. I, I do feel for the actors in that position because 
you're in a position where it's gonna kind of I don't know, you're in danger of fading into you know, a, a long-standing trope rather than your performance actually being accentuated by the material. The question about is the dad alive and what's the dad really up to is just light years more interesting than the actual kids. <laughs> like, yeah. Like the actual just question about it is so much more interesting. Than, than the kids, and even their response to it. I'm just like, I just want to know what's going on with the dad, and I'm not super interested. Like, and I think the show itself is not that interested in them. Like, the, the well, writing they put around the grandma who <laughs> is, is great, Dr. Woman. Uh, she She's great. Her performance is great. I, I really love her. Yeah, same. Um, and then, yeah, with the Shaws, the, like, so much of that is very compelling. Um. So for the most part, I really, it's it's all that stuff where the writing of the characters is the most intriguing. It's them and, and I like Kiersey Clemens. As, I think Kiersey Clemens is a really good actress. Yeah. But even with her, with her, there's, there kind of seems like, I, I feel like some something in the writer's room. I feel a note. It might not be true. It just feels this way to me of we need to provide something to make them more interesting. We need like drama around them to make them more interesting. Sure. Uh, like, you could feel like them like throwing in some note to try to include. So it just reads as kind of melodrama that bogs it down a little bit <laughs> than actually feels like <laughs> drama. I find really, I personally find really interesting. <laughs> you <know>? Yeah. <laughs> the, it feels like somebody mandated these three characters and the show is like, is including them out of spite and is only concerned with doing the bare minimum to have them there. Yeah. <laughs> Which is kind of funny to me because, again, this is a show that is steeped in this lore and is building this world out, but that is, you know, having to rely more on its human elements because they cannot do a money sequence, you know, constantly. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and yeah, it's, it's, it's funny to me because, yeah, I enjoyed the immediacy of this episode and how much this is moving things forward. I'm much more compelled by the characters combined with the story in the past. This episode was, was fun for the present sequences just because, you know, you're on a, a ship and then you're on a plane and we see a new kaiju. And there's some fun to be had there, although I do... And, and not to spend too much time, like, you know, h hypothesizing or rewriting, but part of me thinks that they could have accentuated this whole plot line with the the two, you know, half siblings a lot more if they had utilized a bit of that Gareth Edwards, like, soaking in the environment vibe where they're on a big, uh, you know, world spanning travel, basically. And so I feel like we could have made that feel like experiential in a way where without even having to like write extra drama for them, we could just kind of be along for the journey and bonding with them that way and have like a few little moment. Like every time we come back to those couple of characters, it just feels the most like, oh, I'm watching a show <laughs> with like, here's beats that we got to do. Whereas I can get more lost in a lot of the other stuff. Mm -hmm. So it's like, yeah, I feel for the actors because I, I keep wanting them to, you know, be able to, I don't know, like this has got to be a big opportunity for them. And certainly, you know, it's it's a good, you know, calling card. But uh, yeah, and, and, the, and the bummer too is that they're, and I don't, I really don't know what the general consensus is sure. on, on that, on, on them as the main characters. Yeah. Cause you essentially got two sets of main characters. You got yeah. the people in the past and you got the people in the present. Yeah. And then Shaw is kind of like the connecting thread between the two main characters. Yeah. Two main sets of characters. Right. Yeah. And it's, and in the present, we got two Asian leads, uh -huh. which I think is really cool to get especially when you have like the adaptation of godzilla yeah. <laughs> of godzilla movies to get two asian finally to get yeah. like asian like the two asian leads it's not like just ken watanabe as a co-star lead you know like, yeah not and, not coming in to also fill something of a trope character yeah yeah, yeah. I, th I think that's that's really cool so i i, I am wishing that they were they got, they were given something better here it's weird that that um Kentaro's mom is the still the most distinct flavor to me yeah. of that whole story. A thousand line. percent, I'm right there with you. Because yeah, she's she is given these like regular human you know bit lines, but like everything about that feels like a person and feels like they put a character on it. Whereas, yeah. Whereas I feel like I'm I'm kind of just watching like. 
two protagonists, capital P. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I feel like I don't really have faith, uh, faith the show is really going to change this <laughs> Because this has kind of been an ongoing opinion for us. Sure. And I feel like we could just be very repetitive here. So perhaps if it just carries on, we'll just be like, they're still doing the thing They're we don't really like. That thing. Whatever. <laughs> but if they but if we if they didn't do something that we really like about it, then all right, fuck, we'll talk about that. Yeah. Because this episode did ultimately provide me with a lot of things I really did like. Aesthetically really cool. I do love the fact that they embrace these locations. Some stuff is a little bit silly when you just throw your brain out the window and you're just like, oh fuck it, I guess I got on this ferry. Um <laughs> you know, yeah, I guess like, yeah, like, <laughs> Kurt Russell just has to say I got us on the ferry, right? I yeah. was able to get us onto <laughs> yeah. like the most most inefficient form of travel. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, even though we have a, a truck here we we took that clearly has a very identifiable license plate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. and we've been under hyper surveillance up <laughs> yeah, to this point that I'm pretty sure has reached beyond the compound the we were The only just in. tracker they gave me was yeah. apparently this this ankle bracelet and not yeah. some weird like tracker in my blood or something. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Some bug some bug in my Yeah, yeah as high tech as this uh, monarch <laughs> Yeah. The organization is, and as much <laughs> surveillance as they have on me, it's okay. I got it one step the ahead. The government passport situation, like all that stuff. Like, yeah, this, is, this, is, this is really um, spy heightened that is filled in the blank by. He's on a lot of shit in between <laughs> that we just don't know about. Yeah. And, but it's fun. And Kurt, and Kurt Russell, his, his charisma and charm and his, the way he uses, the way he does his line reading, the way he uses dialogue really brings a lot off the page. There's a reason why Kurt Russell is is the legend that he is. Because yeah. he, he's no he's just known to like he's got a way with dialogue that that makes you're like, ah fuck it, I'm on board. You're Kurt Russell. Yeah. Um, so he and he's such a delight and I really feel like he bring he does bring a lot to this role. And it is kind of fun watching because I think Wyatt Russell's a really good actor. Yeah. <laughs> he's one of the best like nepotism you look like just like your dad yeah. kids and he's, he's, and he's a really good actor of all those guys. and it's kind of like wow what a daunting thing to be in the same show as your dad because yeah. like your dad is a whole other caliber of talent and you're like you're like really freaking good like yeah. you're a, like Wyatt Russell is a great a I still remember watching that Black Mirror episode not oh know yeah not knowing who yeah. that that was the son of Kurt, Kurt Russell, Russell. And being like, this is a great actor. Who is this? Who is this guy? And then yeah. finding out that, oh my God, that's <laughs> Kurt Russell's son. Yeah. yeah. And I had no idea that was Kurt Russell. So I, like, I, I formed that opinion prior to knowing. Um, but it is just fun watching the roles. I <laughs> just feel like one is just so much significantly more charismatic. But it's, it, but at the same time, like what Wyatt Russell is doing, that's why I would be curious to know what the homework is for both of them because where Shaw is at at the point in time where Wyatt Russell's at, that's what's required for that performance. Yeah. Like, like there is a little bit more of a carefree experience. Same time, a lot more wounds have been inflicted on a guy uh, for where, for where Kurt Russell's at, where he's just like, fuck this. I'm going to play it by my own rules a little bit. Yeah. You know, whereas Wyatt Russell was still up and coming and had to be obedient to the army at all costs and everything. Yeah. You know, so it is fun watching the dueling roles there of the same character and um and uh i do like the kaiju stuff i like the themes of again of 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 human history that feels like allegorical to real life to the point where uh, when you're watching the way this portrayed and then you're seeing the traumatic events of what today is like with the godzilla incidents and the muto from the 2014 movie you're going oh maybe there was a path where they may have been able to pre prevent some of this mm -hmm or help prepare humanity for it if they didn't just make that one mistake of we got to just shoot this thing yeah you know like was there a path where they could have where we could have almost like eased each other into coexistence yeah in some greater way than just an immediate attack to to leave that first impression yeah yes yeah, so there's a lot i really liked about this i'm really into it when we're watching it you know? yeah no i'm yeah. too and i'm rooting for it to continue on and i'm like i'm here for the mystery and i'm excited to find stuff like yeah it's it has those those bits that we have you know well trodden in terms of how it could be better and more gripping dramatically speaking but the shock right too was it? Oh, it's shot. shot. Yeah, yeah. It's, it, no, it totally is. And and it's one of those things where it does 
at least again when they are going big scale like look really nice like when you're going up the back plates on Godzilla and that whole thing where it comes out of the water mm-hmm. and the mist is coming up like it looks really beautiful and yeah like I am enjoying the spirit and and I think the way that they do the the, especially the way that they handle being in the 50s it feels kind of i'm able to just kind of slip into it and not be i don't know They're, like it's nicely hewn to the point where it's not too stylized and crazy it's not i don't know it just feels kind of natural it doesn't feel as much like oh this is a you know i don't know what i'm trying to say like the Sometimes you can feel the facade, especially when you're cutting back and forth and especially on like mm-hmm. a TV format. Like it doesn't feel like they're stretched in any way, bringing that stuff to life. And uh, no, it doesn't. Yeah. And and, oh, and, I'm, and I think it's I think there's like the way they work with the DP. It, it, it feels doesn't feel like a shot, like a show. Like there's a lot of symmetry to everything. Everything feels very thought out and composed. And mm-hmm. there, it, a lot of times in the, I wouldn't. The only time I've really said that when it wasn't focused on monsters was Gareth Edwards' 2014 movie. Yeah. Which I think is a very, I think it's a very underrated movie because it got a lot of backlash for for the the way they chose to capture Godzilla in the perspective and obscure him a lot of the time and stuff. Yeah. So I understand. <laughs> and, uh, um, but I think as time has gone on, it's become more appreciated. It's personally my favorite of the, the movies <laughs> that have come out. It's it's actually my favorite. Yeah. I know it's not the one that we all really want, but I, I find that the most effective one. It's the most well-rounded yeah. movie of all of them. It's definitely 2014 for me. For my, I, my, I know my rating easily. 2014, Godzilla vs. Kong, King of the Monsters, Kong Skull Island. Um, really? Yeah, a lot of people prefer Kong Skull Island over yeah. uh, King of the Monsters, and I don't. I, that, pre- I prefer It's definitely my the bottom for me okay yeah my, my my ranking would probably be that it would be 2014 kong godzilla versus kong kong skull island king of the monsters yeah i'm not a big fan i've tried kong skull, kong skull island always starts off like ooh, and then it just really loses me every time that's fair <laughs> the last half i'm always like yeah this is kind of this is really not the fun is definitely wearing thin for me and i just get annoyed it, it um, can plateau yeah. <laughs> king of the monsters is there there are aspects yeah. of that movie that, that are kind of like aggravating to me um but but you know there's a lot of really beautiful monster stuff so they might even average out but but yeah but, like but, oh, but my point that yeah. i was saying was that Clareth edwards i thought really shot Every moment of that with such composition and and scale and and like you're there, but be well, I'm saying even when there wasn't a monster thing happening. Yeah, exactly. No, exactly. Whereas the other movies, I sort of feel like they reserve that <laughs> yeah. for the monster yeah, stuff for, to sell it. Yeah. It doesn't really care about doing that when you're in between scenes. With yeah, the humans. like yeah. they're shot fine. They're always shot good. But 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 it's like okay, they really that that's when they really give a shit. And then. I would say this show matches that with Gareth Edwards, in, at least in the intention of we really care about every shot we're doing. Yeah. Like every, sh- even if it's just a talking scene, which which is most of this, mo- they really give a shit on how to compose every frame. Yeah. And I really appreciate that, uh, especially for a television series. Yeah. Where they that is a very filmmaker. This still feels like filmmaker driven. Which is kind of strange because normally you're like you feel that with the writing, and not so much the directing. And <laughs> I kind of have an inverse have with this experience. Way. Yeah, I or, feel like yeah. the directing is where the filmmaking shining, and some of the writing is where I feel a little bit perfunctory in and how they're doing it. Yeah, 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 yeah. There, there are a lot of there are a lot of perfunctory beats across <laughs> a lot of the characterizations and stuff like that. But I, but yeah, the, to varying, like to varying degrees of appropriateness, but yeah, the, the style, the mood, the atmosphere is always on point and it's like appropriately dreary when it needs to be. But then you'll have these nice contrasts of like how beautiful it is when they're out on the beach. Um, and then, yeah, you're out in the ice and whatnot. And just like when you're looking up at snow, but then just like clouds and like you kind of lose where the sky is like, yeah, yeah. there's a lot of real beauty and, and things to marvel at. And uh, and yeah, I, I appreciate so much about <laughs> how they've orchestrated this. And I and I like that they're giving us at least these like kooky little things to wonder about, like, OK, 
Kurt Russell, how old is he? And is he like aging slowly? Is he regenerating? Uh, regenerating somehow? Is he? Is this gonna be like a Jurassic World character? And he's like a secret clone <laughs> or something like yeah. that. Which I don't know how wacky they're gonna ultimately go with it. But you know, I, I like having little mysteries like that on the on the surface to at least ponder about. And uh, and and yeah, going back, like I did think that was a really nice moment where the two kids are able to both identify the handwriting. It's like a real nice way to tie that all together. And now we have, you know, present and past kaiju, you know, moments. We got this big ice dude with either the Mm. couldn't quite tell if that was. Yeah, like some kind of like the force of the suction is so cold that it froze everything in the cabin of the plane. I was sad. I like that guy. I liked his uh, his buddy from Korea. It's very obvious. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's it's that's what I mean by the writing. There's a lot of tropes and there's a lot of like. This is about what would happen, you know, yeah. in in the writing, and uh, and yeah, it's it seems like right now it's kind of always up to the actors to elevate it, and I think about it less in the the flashbacks because I think the three of them just have more chemistry. I think that's what it is. I think Kurt Russell helps give chemistry with anybody he's directly interacting with, and the present trio I don't feel as much just like natural chemistry between as like when you cut oh, to God. the three of them in the past, they have. Even when the writing could be better and even when you're like, oh, I know exactly what's going to happen. The military is going to come in. They're going to be too gung ho. They're going to lead completely adversarially and all that stuff. You still feel that sense of magic at the end when they kind of strike that deal of like, all right, well, you can tell me everything I need to know. You basically can do your research and I'll act as a buffer to help you get that done and deal with, you know, the people upstairs who have clearly shown us how they're going to handle our research or how our, our endeavor here and. I keep thinking at one part of me in my rewrite brain (laughs) and waiting to see how the season plays out before I commit to this thought is I don't think you need Kiersey Clemens. I think you could have translate transplanted a lot of that to the sun. It would have made him more interesting if he himself had become some type of like hacker person and he investigates it himself. But but Greg and and I I think he has zero chemistry with Kiersey Clemens. (laughs) There's none. Yeah. And I and I kind of. I and they're supposed to you be. know you what can they're doing. Some, you can make some weird fucking argument for him and the sister being he's, like they're distant and strange. You know? He's not allowed. No, I honestly, it kind of feels to me like they went. We have these two leads, but she's his half sister. We cannot orchestrate a, a romance here, so we right. need him to have an ex flame so he can have a romance with a pretty lead who we have yeah. sort of tacked on. And I like that kind of character that Kiersey Clemens is playing. I like the way she's playing it, but I I don't disagree in there's, its current form that there's if no you made thought put her in her mess. Yeah. She's here to be hacker character and have the, you know, like, info when it's needed. Like basically. she is so along for the adventure. And I'm like, but you are the you you are so uninterested. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, and 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 again, it's one of those things where I'm like, maybe if they had sh- they showed us that moment in the previous episode where Kentaro comes by and she like blows him off, and then she's like, oh, I'm working on other things, but she's clearly digitizing yeah. all the monarch stuff, and it's like maybe just an extra beat to show like what your obsession with this is, aside from just being annoyed that he brought this or, to your uh, door or a lewd. <laughs> yeah, give it. Just give us like some secret fun shit to unpack, yeah. even if it's just normal human stakes by the end that it reveals to be like. Give us something with those characters to wonder about or to think of their allegiances in relation to Me- mellow drama or characters arguing does not immediately equate to strong conflict or compelling care it just doesn't and, and it's, to me it's just like it feels like perfunctory melodrama and it uh, does and the yeah. way the brother and sister treat each other is indicative of that because it's clear the main beat that the two of them focus on is just like our dad cheated and it's kind of like the only yeah. piece of character history that informs most of their interactions and then with Kiersey Clemens it's just like oh we used to be together <laughs> drama <laughs> you yeah. know? and uh I, yeah like it's yeah it's just one of those things where you're sitting there <laughs> going that's all it is so yeah. it's so boring you're just like guys i and two i mean you never know but like sitting here with everything as good as it is now i'm everything else as sort of interesting yeah. this is well, so much of this for for as much as we've had critique throughout this review. This show is like better and more engaging than I was expecting. Like I'm having a lot of fun watching it. And so 
I expected it to be slightly better only because the Rotten Tomatoes score was like through the roof on it. It still is. Yeah. It's yeah. so high. Yeah. And and <laughs> and it's like, <laughs> I expected it to be, see, I, I yeah, I didn't see that until after we started watching the first yeah. couple of episodes and I had a primer. And so if I had seen that, yeah. I might be a, a bit more disappointed. Point, I, I was like, point damn, in. this shit's just like almost at a hundred right now. Yeah, yeah and, and so that yeah, th- that leads me to believe like, oh, it's got all the cool pulp you want, but also probably has like some at least affecting drama. And and yeah. it's like I I don't really care about any of the drama. <laughs> like it's it is about as boilerplate as you could get aside from it being about a guy searching trying to get his wife back or something, you know? Yeah. Like and so that's I I don't know how much to expect out of that from the season going forward. I certainly hope that because this is all done. I assume like they're not. It's not like network TV where yeah. there's a period of time where like you're shooting while stuff's airing and you can actually adjust. You know, uh, so I don't know. I just hope that maybe the writers feel emboldened upon the back of this success in the future to. Yeah, right. Some actual like yeah. we've proven that we can sit with some people in a Godzilla and it's fine. And now I think it'll only help you if you get some actual interesting shit for those percent. people. To do. Well, guys, uh, <laughs> got to work on the video right now. But what did you guys think about this episode? How are you feeling about the Monarch series thus far? Leave your thoughts down below. Uh, be sure to subscribe, leave a like, and hey, we will talk with you all soon. Thank you for being here.